Okay, race fans, you're gonna like this one. This is the Mystic Lubricants National Snowcross Round from the Horseshoe Valley Ski Resort just north of Barrie, Ontario. This is round seven of the 2019 Rockstar Energy Snowcross Championships Snow Bike Final out on track right now. This circuit's got some great dynamics, uphill, big jumps, and huge turns. This is professional snowcross racing at its best. It's gonna be a beauty. Brian Coster and Mark Travers in the booth as we get ready to decimate the Horseshoe Valley Ski Resort. You see the CSRA groomer out on the track prepping for the pro and pro-life final. Of course, today's racing will be brought to you by FXR Apparel, Race Division, and Factory Ride. And what about Royal Distributing, Canada's power sports leader? Brian, a very dynamic track similar to Chicopee last week, but I think with the weather conditions, it's gonna be very difficult. Now, here's the snow bike final that we saw earlier today, and these guys were wicked it up large. Absolutely, Jesse Kirchmeyer there on the orange KTM, silver medalist at this year's X Games, and on the inside, Ontario's Yannick Boucher making a play on that Bailey. Medals, Huska, Varna, these two were the class of the field tracks when they went at it hard. Yesterday, running the Joker lane or the Equalizer lane, there goes the 53 of Boucher. Gnarly uphill whoop section. Coming down though, a little icy and it rained. And there is Jesse Kirchmeyer on that FXR number 42 on the side. And of course, that number one representing where he is right now in the point stand. Now Fabs, let's talk about the fact that equalizer lane, they only have to run it once today. So in the seven lap pro light final, only one time and in the 10 lap pro final, only one time. But it really changes up the way you watch the racing because it separates them and then brings them back together again. And there is that Joker lane working for Boucher as he gets the advantage. Going up the hill, that Kirschmeyer just eats it. Welcome to the snow with a violent face plan. And you talked about the fact that this track was very icy. Of course, raining during the middle of the day. And as we got into the finals, things were starting to get a little colder. Ladies and gentlemen, pop the top on a rock star and buckle up. Welcome, race fans, to the Horseshoe Valley Ski Resort just north of Barrie, Ontario, for round seven of the 2019 Rockstar Energy Snowcross Championships. Pro Light Riders off of parade now coming up with their gate picks, Brian. We talked about the rain off the top. It's starting to snow, so this track is going to be very difficult. Slushy in places, icy. Oh, it's going to be a tough one. Yeah, the sleds are going to plow a little bit on the front end, so putting in a little more ski pressure there up front to get a little bite. The course on the back end, a little bit more track spin, too, coming out of the corners. Pro light standings after six of eight. Lightfoot and Walkler have a wicked battle happening. First right in there, Mathot, Billings, Rock. We've got to watch out for that young camera walkler, though. Him and Lightfoot are embroiled in it. What a talented lineup of pro light riders on the line. You see a couple of the riders in the second level. That's based on qualifying. Today's pro light final will be brought to you by the Fun Bunch. St. Ange Recreation just outside of Barrie, Ontario. What a fabulous dealership, and they've got a great pro team. Brian, riders now focusing on Big Bad Mike. When that hand goes up, the hand of Mike, the green light goes. Fabs, here we go. There there's Mikey, hand is up, free light. Coming to that first corner, who's gonna get that whole shot? And looks like Tyler Billings with a wicked jump there on the cat. Few of the guys opting to take the equalizer. Joker lane right off the hop. Rest of the guys getting on the main course. So the riders on the main course will be scored as your leaders. Out front, it's Stewart. And right there in second is the 88 of Mick Dubé. Right in behind Durba, a local boy, Kale Firth on the 140 Arctic Kia. Dubé is the wild child out there, Brian. He's had some great rides, but yeah. he is sometimes all over the track. So love to see him in the fray. Up to Stewart on that LRR Skidoo looking really good. And Brian, you're right. These are the riders that were scoring in the lead because the other riders in the pack have gone up and done the equalizer and they will be coming in behind these guys. The big question is, Brian, when do these riders now do the equalizer? Stewart crossing the line, coming into turn one. Looks like he is just wicking it and pinning it right up the hill. That puts the 88 of Mick Dubé.
Juve in first place, a very colorful character. So Duke Noobs is leading right now, and there he is. Let's just see how this pans out, because right now the riders that took the equalizer on the first lap are half a lap behind Duve. He, there they are. You yeah. can see him in the foreground there in the background. So right now it looks like Taylor Lightfoot and Ronnie are in the mix. Ronnie on the Monster Pillars. Polaris having a good season there on the 204 all orange gear through the Deco right-hander coming down and getting a little greasy in there with all that rain. Here comes Dubé getting a little sideways <laughs> through the MBRP exhaust front section in the rhythm. Check out the style there of Lightfoot. He's pressuring hard in second. Lightfoot in the roof zone opting to go up the hill. The Joker lane is causing all kinds of interesting excitement here. Travs are going to merge down from that top section. Right now, Dubes pulling out a nice gap. Well, it's great to see some different faces up front right now. We haven't seen Doobie Doo in the top five at any point. Stewart, who was in the lead, now coming back into fifth place, coming down from the equalizer. So you can see how that works into the top ten. Once all the riders do that equalizer, it really sorts back into a semblance of tight racing. Kale Firth not yet doing the Joker lane, and look how rough it is through that front section. All the spectators are treated to the sights and sounds and the smell of that beautiful Sunoco race wow. fuel burning the 600cc two-strokes. A lot of horsepower. Stewart and Ronnie having a nice battle through that middle section. Some really tight turns and then some dynamic rhythm sections. This is a great track and a great facility to watch Snowcross. Stewart's in trouble. Stewart gets bumped out. Wow! <laughs> what, what, a, what an awesome pass. So with the equalizer lane, Stewart goes from first to fifth, Alex Ross busts out a beauty move. Rubbins racing. Or clicking door handles, as the great John Massenberg used to say. Coming around the corner here, Brian. This is a tight part of the track, and probably one of the slowest parts as they really slow down and plow that snow. Well, everything in the rider wants to get on that gas early, but it is rough, and you get out of that main line up into that saw stuff, and actually, you can lose time. Our leader, Dubé, now going up the equalizer high speed throttles pin it's getting pretty bumpy up there riders still got to remain on their toes because you can really get those skis up in the air and wheelies so now walkler becomes our leader Travs as he merges through we'll see where dubay joins the track and regroup on our top five well it's a real chess match brian because when do you do the equalizer lane you saw walkler go right up on the first lap and now he's in the lead dubay coming out from the backside did he time it properly? It looks like he's going to be right behind Walkler. A couple other sleds in there. I think Dubé's in four, so that was actually pretty good for him. 14-year-old Walkler. Wow, what a prodigy here. Big kid. He can throw that cat around nice through the Deco. Right-hander. You can see how rough and tumble it is and what command he has of that pro light Articat here to the front straightaway. Earlier we saw the 55 of Mathot hand off, wiping those goggles, so you know visibility a problem. Want to talk about Taylor Billings, though, sitting in second. Big, strong kid as well, and great to see him. A great disposition, sitting second. A great day all the way around. Oh, Billings is off! off. No, Billings is, is off! And he gets all kinds of sideways on that finish line. Roller section and is ejected from his sled. Gets it fired up, but oh, what a shame. He lost a ton of ground. At that point in time, Brian, we had three Articats going one, two, three yeah. with Walkler, Billings, and Lightfoot. So now Lightfoot up to second place. There he is, and right behind him is Dubé. So a little gift for Dubé. Well, you got to get it any way you can out here in this sport. Oh. Walkler, our leader. Lightfoot's going to be pretty happy to get that second. That's helping him in the championship points. Leading right now, but boy, Walkler is chipping away on that championship race. Second win in a row for Walkler. And that points race is actually tightening up between him and Light. But let's get to our top 10 in a crazy pro life final here from Horseshoe Valley. Ross and Stewart rounding out your top five. We've got Billings, Ronnie, Mathot, and Firth. Fabs is in the winner's circle. Flanked by the beautiful rock star girls, 14 year old Cameron Walkler winning last weekend and another win here today in the final. Cameron, you got that Articat just gelling with yourself. Yeah, we got that. Cat working really good, just got out to the whole shot, went straight up the hill and had just a clear race the whole time. Well, the track is rough. Did you know what was going on behind you? Any inkling that uh, those guys were right there? 
Not a clue. My dad told me before this race, no more looking back. So we just kept our eyes straight and went for that win. Taylor Lightfoot bringing in second here in the final light race of the day. Taylor, what a moto here. You had a lot of action all around you. Throw in that joker lane or the equalizer lane made for a lot of excitement. Yeah, it was pretty exciting. It was a tough track all day. Uh, we only take the joker lane there in the last last to final there. Um, so it was kind of tough all day, hard to pass. So I actually kind of liked it. It allowed us to gap a little bit, spread each other out. Um, kind of a little bit of strategy, but it worked out for me in the end. Third place, Mick Dubé. Mick nestled in here with the Rockstar Beauties. Interesting race for you. Holy cow! It looked like a it looked like probably the best race of the year for you. Yeah, it's been a good uh, it's been a good year. Uh, Ken kind of threw something around us there, a Joker Lane, so it was kind of hard to figure out when when you're gonna take it and not whatnot. So uh, I managed to do it like second last lap, and it worked out for me. Things are starting to tighten. Look at that, 13 points between Lightfoot and Walkler. One round to go in the Pro Light class for 2019. Fabs, take the podium, would ya? There it is. One, two, three on the day. Pro Light Finals. Welcome back to the Horseshoe Valley Ski Resort in round seven of the 2019 Rockstar Energy Snow Cross Championships. Mark Travers and Brian Coster in the booth as we get set up for the pro final. We see riders coming out of staging with their gate picks and the number 459 of Yeki Weir is the top dog, Fabs, and he has been all about his business so far. But I have to admit, I'm really liking the 117 of Isaac St. Ange. He's been on the move lately. This is our point after six of eight rounds. Last year's champion Dave Jonas is in the hunt right now, but St. Ange is the man on the move. Just showing how important every heat and every final and every lap of these snowcross races is. This pro final brought to you by Royal Distributing, Canada's power sports leader, Travs. And you know, a lot of these fans here shop at Royal Distributing. They get their FXR gear there, and they get their rock star energy as well on the way. Notice Dave Jonas on the second row, Brian. We had a false start, so he had to go to the back. So this is actually a restart of the pro final. Dylan Barnett on that gorgeous Polito Ford ski do on the inside. Let's look for Mad Mike. Remember, when that hand goes up, the light goes green. Go get him, Mikey! Wow, a great start on the inside. That Polito Ford ski do. Barnett gets a nice jump, wheeling down, but gets edged out and up the hill. A good portion of the riders opting for the equalizer lane. Looks like we are having a nice wheelie. St. Anji right in there in the mix, right in behind the 18 of Mitch King taking a peek on the inside. Oh, oh man, oh man, he's getting a face full of roost now. Down the hill here, it gets very slippery, bumpy. A wicked jump coming in here. You're on the brakes, you see that shiny stuff. Slide right out into that outside berm. The pack is bunching up, but right now with that clear vision, worth a million bucks for Taylor on the ski dude. The 820 of Barnett in second place and the 433 of Callum, who's Jonas's teammate on that pillar, Sassage Polaris in third place. Again, these riders did not go up and do the equalizer lane. And here's that package led by Weir, who are coming down the mountain, if you will, Brian, and following up to that lead package. Yeah, to merge back in. So most of our top key players opting to go up the mountain. Our leaders ripping pretty good. Will they go? Barnett does it. And earlier on, you see those trio there how fast they were through some of those turns really impressed with barnett this year when he keeps it together and there he is now currently leading on that gorgeous Polito ford lincoln ski do riders out of the lindsay ontario area that corner right there he has it just dialed and he can take a pounding look at him just bouncing this way and that Right, let's talk about the track conditions changing from earlier in the day because you see the snow starting to come down. The temperature has dropped, yeah. so it is starting to get a lot more icy in some of those deep pockets, if you will. Yeah, the track has definitely set up a lot better with the cooler temperature starting to pack in a bit more on board with St. Ange still not able to get by the 18 of Mitch King. Check out the outside. Wow, wow. See, the 21 just slide way out there on that icy bit. St. Ange, such a thrilling rider to watch. He is all oh over him, getting an inside peek. And look at that big slush pile right there. It's basically a puddle. 
and Ange just gets a roosted. Now look on the front of the 820 Barnett sled. It's that big loosed guard. You're wondering what that kind of awkward looking opposite windshield is. That's basically to stop the roost from coming up from the competitors. A lot of the riders running those roost guards. Nice move there through the Deco corner. Barnett looks stylish out front leading, but when will he do the joker lane and figure out where he actually sets in with our top dogs. And that's why it's a game when they throw this equalizer line in, Brian, because you don't know when they're going to take it. And you think about Barnett right now, he's got a pretty good lead. So just like Dubé in that pro light final, this might work out to his advantage. But man, does he look good right now. Oh, man, he looks awesome. Good strategy because he's not eating all that roost. He's had clean air most of the race. These guys are right in the soup of it. Get <laughs> roosted and sauced up through those wet corners. St. Ange is just been getting Pummeled as he approaches the 21 of Taylor. He's got the 115 last year's champion, Dave Jonas, hot on his heels. Jonas riding real well. We got to make mention of the Baylor Motorsports riders, 18 of King up ahead, and the teammate Ryan Hunt on the 729. They are actually in good position right now. Back on board with the 117 of Isaac St. Ange. Brian, this gives you a really good perspective of what it's like to race snow cross and how much snow sass is just getting pummeled all over you and how they like to ride those high berms, especially with all those slush in the bottom corners. Here's oh, my move. goodness, look at Anj. Anj is taking it, takes a peek up the inside. Not much to see yet. Big rollers there. I like the lines. St. Anj is taking a very creative young man, and he's not afraid to take a big hit. He just pins it. But Jonas right there, the consummate champion, takes those rollers probably better than anyone is the 115 on the Monster Polaris. Sitting second in points right now. Weir is the man to watch in second place. He has been winning a lot of these races this year as we get into the latter stages. Look at him go, just floating those skis up over the rough wow. stuff. Poetry in motion this kid rides with so much panache, style, and aggression. Well, Weir is definitely the class of the field. If you think about the fact that he went up and did that equalizer early, puts him in second place. He's in good position right now to take the lead as soon as Barnett decides to go up. So we'll have to keep our eyes peeled on the actual order utilizing that equalizer lane. We talked about those Bailey metal sleds. They're in this mix as well. But it looks like St. Ange is the one who's trying to make a move in that back package. You're right, we are poetry in motion. Man, I don't think there's a guy on the track that rides the sled with as much swagger and style as you're saying, the panache. <laughs> he looks awesome right now as we're isolated on him. That is the country corners on a cat. Of course, James Farrington from RJ Motorsport doing the clutching and the tuning. And here on this big up Hill. A lot of mythology going into your clutch settings. The skis can be changed, the track, the suspension, but again, a spec motor with just a silencer allowed, and that's where companies like MBR come in. Look at that oh, shot again! Oh, just, oh, 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 just over! Oh, oh, maybe a little help from Jonas. I don't know, but right there in the suit, he's down and he's doing a little <laughs> trying to get that thing over. Oh, what a frantic situation for Isaac St. Austria. Oh, kid can't buy a break right here. And think about where the sled is up on that berm. It's very difficult to roll those heavy sleds over in that position because yeah. they're getting mired down in all that slop. Yellow flag out for Weir, who's now in the lead, Brian. You saw Barnett in behind in that package, and that was him coming back through the equalizer line. And Hunt in second place. Wow, is that not great for that young rider? Amazing and very awkward for St. Ange to tip it right there on that angle. Ryan Hunt suffering a knee injury all season long. Finally coming into his own. A very talented rider, but not really able to show his stuff this year. St. Ange back on the sled and he waves Weir by in the lead. Let's go back and have a look at we're going on board, Brian. It looks like he gets a little squirrely on the way in. Sort yeah. of saves it here, but it was that little slush puddle and then over he goes. My goodness. Yeah, he catches a ski and I think... Uh, I mean, Jonas didn't have much of a place to go there and just spins the sled right around. Jonas loses a bunch of time as well. Ryan Hunt on that Bailey Metal Skidoo, all black, looking awesome right now, working it. He rides the snow bike class as well. He says the snow bike is a little easier on that gimpy knee than the sled where you're crouched right down and really a lot of body English through there, Trav, with that lean and a lot of angling on the knee and a lot of the riders using their feet and ankles to stabilize these sleds, so 
Hunt suffering through the pain, riding solid. Right, think about recreational riders riding sleds on groomed trails and how much body position they throw around to go around corners. You gotta time that by 10 on these rough snow cross tracks. 100% correct. This is nothing like your average day out on the groomed trails where you can have a ball with your snowmobile, but coming out here, it is a different world. White flag, last lap. Jakey Weir out front. Where is Barnett though, Travis? Barnett filtered in here as well. I think he's sitting third now. I think he's tucked right up in close to Ryan Hunt. So his strategy played out really well, Brian, because he ran three or four or five laps without going up and doing the equalizer and then tucked right back in ahead of that little Isaac St. Ange package with Taylor. And that way he had some clean vision and looks like he might be up on the podium. What a ride for Weir. Nicely just taking it easy. And think how we started this day with pouring rain and how it has just transformed the CSRA doing an amazing job on the course. We are through the Daco Belts right hander. Of course, Daco, a huge supporter of the CSRA. Awesome to have them along for the ride. But it is Jakey Weir coming in to take the checkers and the W. He's the winner. Podium and Rockstar Girls next. Welcome back to round seven of the 2019 Rockstar Energy Snowcross Championships. There's your winner in the pro final. That's 459 of Jake Weir. Great ride for Ryan Hunt and Dylan Barnett. King was solid in fourth. Taylor with a great ride in fifth place. And St. Ange rounds out your top nine. Hey, Fabs, you got something? Give it to me. Third place finisher, Polito Ford Skidoo, Dylan Barnett. Dylan, the last rider to do the equalizer lane, and it paid off, man. Great strategy. Yeah, thank you. We planned it out before we went out there. I was able to just ride my own race, stayed out of everyone's way, and uh, had clear vision the whole race. So. Wow, what a finish for Ryan Hunt, Bailey Motorsports, second place, Ryan. It's been a tough season for you battling that knee injury, but boy, did you ever put it together in that moto. Uh, yeah, I just kind of, I'm out here for fun and trying to take what I can with the knee injury and I just kind of go out there and ride my best race. I'm stuck mentally, you know, and dogging myself all season. So I started off strong and then kind of fell back a couple paces that I didn't want to, but just trying to have fun on the last weekend here in Horseshoe and try to remember the season on a good note. On the cat, Jake Weir. Jake, what a ride for you. You seem glued to the top spot of the box these last few races, buddy. You are on fire. Yeah, thank you. I'm feeling comfortable on the sled so and getting good starts, so that's pretty much what you need to do to be up here. You like these drop-down starts a little better because it seemed you could just pin it right off the get-go and wheelie down the hill. Yeah, I'm, I kind of like them. I like the flat starts better. Just because well, it's not as hard to go do the flat starts as a drop start, but it is a challenge, so I like a challenge, so... To the points in the pro class after seven of eight rounds, only one more round remaining, and it looks like the 459, barring disaster, is going to take this pro championship in 2019. It has been one heck of a day here at the Horseshoe Valley Ski Resort. There's your top three in the pro class. Racers, don't forget about snowcross.com. That's where all the results are, and the Snowcross Facebook page for all the goodies. You have been watching the 2019 Rockstar Energy Drink Snowcross Championships. Brought to you by FXR Apparel, Race Division, and Factory Ride. And Royal Distributing, Canada's power sports leader. For Brian Coster, Ken Evan, and the entire Rockstar Snowcross team, I'm Mark Travers. Let's go out with a little snow bike action on the inside. We'll see you next week.